I'm sure there's at least some crossover between the Europa Universalis crowd and the Civilization crowd, and looking back at channels that built their name with Civ and later EU4, like those of Drew Dernal, show that to be true. Heck, even I have some really popular Civilization videos, and I doubt many of you watching, most of which who actually aren't subscribed, so you can fix that by clicking the red button below the video, would consider me a Civilization YouTuber. But I did find this cool mod on the workshop the other day called Rise of Civilizations, which introduces a few underdeveloped single province nations around the map to act as seeds for civilization. Definitely has that early game Civ vibes to it. Everyone can colonize and grow their borders and they can develop their own religions and cultures, which is really cool to watch unfold. So let's take a look and see how it looks after about a thousand years. If you enjoy the video, make sure that you leave a like, it really does help out a lot. And real quick, if you're looking for a fun way to get involved with myself or my community, patrons and channel members get exclusive fancy roles and access to supporter only chats in the Discord. It's a fun time in there and I want to invite you in if you want to support. You also get early access to all the videos on this channel. Check out the links in the description. So here we go. The year is one. <laughs> it is one, the year one, uh, the very beginning of time, apparently. The great powers of the world, there are five of them. The ancient Egyptians, Babylonians, Indus, Chinese, and the Minoans over in Crete. Three development for all of them, except for only two for these guys in Crete, because screw them in particular, they have no productivity, I suppose. I don't really know how this mod works mechanically, but uh, there's only one way to find out. We're gonna go ahead, turn it on up to speed five and unpause. Also worth mentioning that none of these nations have a dedicated mission tree. It's just generic. So I don't actually know how exactly it works. Um, whether it's like they just kind of sit around, develop, get technology and unlock stuff. Uh, gonna have to kind of figure this out as we go along here because I really I really don't know it does look like uh, There's some uh, some work in progress here with our uh, with our stuff, but um, okay We'll see how things go with this They do indeed get colonists and they are colonizing so we're seeing it I was confused for a second there I assume that these are event spawned colonists for a modifier or something like that so we do have people filling up their general vicinity. Keep in mind, economy is going to be limiting because, you know, three dev is not much to uh, get income enough to colonize with. So we'll see how things going over here. But the Chinese have a crazy amount of land to expand to, as do the Indus. Honestly, everybody's got kind of a lot of land to expand into, though I'm sure we're going to see more conflict with these guys early on. Now, it's not super relevant, but the religions are like very random. I assume that that's kind of the, the sieve thing they're going for. Uh, where you can kind of pick make your religion like these guys are Jains, but for some reason it's not localized and doesn't have the uh localization uh for the the icon there 25 percent dev cost is pretty cracked uh these guys over here are uh slavic apparently we have uh some suomanusco over here with no icon uh so yeah things are definitely looking pretty weird hellenism in the uh, the indian world and also the cultures are like super random as well. South African, these guys I believe are uh, Mosquito. Uh, these guys are Iberian. And then over here, these guys are Andean, I believe. So uh, yeah, this is weird. This is really weird, but I assume that's intended. I assume it's intended. If not, it's funny, but I assume it's intended. So 50 years in, we've got the Indus and the Egyptians out in the front, kind of by a lot when you think about it in terms of percentages. China was way down here, but uh, they slowly crawled their way up uh, with Babylon and a, uh, a newly released QQ over there in the fifth spot with uh, the Greeks just like literally doing nothing. They're, uh, they're colonizing Crete and then they're sitting there on their development, which is not a whole lot of it. Though QQ popping out here, I assume was from Rebels, and I don't think it was intended, but still, we'll see how things go with that. Uh, I definitely think that uh, it's been slower than I expected, but within a couple hundred years, which I guess is reasonable when you're playing Civ, most of the action takes place in the late game, and I assume that this is kind of based on a Civ-ish sort of setup, so I'll give it some time. We're going to have to give this mod a chance. It's definitely in need of some polish, but I think that it's got a really cool uh, setup. Interesting. It's got good bones, as we would say. And another 100 years later, we've got some new tags on the map. Uh, notably, these boys over here have colonized the straits over here. So it looks like they're probably going to get an economic base up. They'll be able to start colonizing quite a bit more in due time. We also have Ancient Egypt hanging out, still growing, but no changes to their tag yet. We have QQ, who has annexed the Babylonians. Punjab popped out over here and then Qin or Quinn or I don't know how you pronounce these words over here in China and Punjab is actually surprisingly still out in first with QQ right behind them and Qin right behind them ancient Egypt and then the Minoans still over 100 devs so you know <laughs> they're making gains eventually slowly but surely they will probably catch up there's a lot of very rich land over here in Europe 
and I'm sure they will be able to get some of it. Another 100 years has passed and not a whole lot of growth has gone on over here, a bit of growth into Anatolia, but definitely quite a bit of growth over here with AQ popping out of QQ, as well as a bunch of other nations over here. We have Farce, which is a weird color. I like pink Farce better, or actually I like yellow Farce the best. And then Isfahan in Iraq, exclusively out of Iraq, actually in like Iran. So that's pretty funny. Over in India, Punjab continues to grow with uh, some weird looking wastelands. Not really sure what that's about, but they are here. Uh, and then meanwhile, over here, Kind is not looking good. They have exploded into about just as many tags as you can imagine with ancient China making another appearance here. Religiously, things are looking super strange. We've got totemists, Egyptian, outside of Egypt with the Slavics over here in Egypt exclusively, the Finnish over here, Druids in AQ, and then uh, the sleep, sleepy uh, dream time whatever over here with a bunch of Jewish and fetishists in their midst. So I think the religious map mode is going to look super, super cool. We do also have cultures popping out here with the Czech <laughs> over here, the French and the Bretons up in the north with some Angoloi uh, mixed in here. So, oh, this is so good. I love this. We have the Norse. The Norse have popped out over here uh, with the Iberians over here. This is cool. I'm a fan. I'm a big fan of this. I think this is going to make the final maps very cool to look at. It definitely appears that a lot more stuff was changed than I originally thought uh, for this mod. So I think I can forgive some of the lack of polish. This is cool. And if the scope is as big as I'm kind of thinking it is, I'm definitely here for it. It's been about another 100 years. Tags in China are definitely growing. And I think that it's a, a nice thing that there's so many tags because it means there's more colonists because it's a base two colonists for everybody. So everybody has two colonists and more tags means more colonists. So makes sense that China would be growing as it is. Punjab, however, not looking so good. Um, <laughs> their land is over here with a capital, old capital over here. And then a bunch of other nations that have popped out of them. Now, I, I assume that a lot of this is scripted because I just see nations randomly just kind of collapse. Not without, I'm not seeing any rebels or anything like that. So I think that, that this is scripted and it's kind of cool because it allows you to have more diversity in like the region. So you're kind of showing like the rise, the fall, the collapse of societies and then new societies that kind of come out of the ashes. So that's pretty cool. And I'm a fan of this. I really like this. Isfahan has been pushed over here into Oman with Khorasan and Kerman looking pretty good over here. This is an absolute mess over here. I hate this. This is disgusting. And Syria over here in Iraq with Lebanon down here in Syria. So this is all good stuff. I'm a big fan of all of this. Now, of course, the thing that I am most excited about here is Byzantium right next to Ottomans. So there's a thing. We also have Zaforosia <laughs> over here in Anatolia. <laughs> and Bulgaria is kind of up here in their old old stomping ground. So pretty good stuff. I, I'm definitely a fan of kind of the dynamic tags that are popping out because it makes things a lot more interesting. Egypt has also formed and we also have lower Nubia. So there's quite a few provinces that are uh, switching over into more interesting tags that maybe I didn't expect to see. And I'm definitely looking forward to letting a little bit of time pass, seeing kind of what comes out on the other side. Religiously, Shinto has popped out over here, interestingly enough. Uh, Egyptian is doing well, and Druidism has made its way over here. It used to be over here. Now, this is all Jain. All of it. They're all Jainism, uh, except for a couple of random ones here, and then the Finnish people over here in uh, whatever this is. The old, this is like who the Greeks originally were over here on Crete, and now they're like basically exiled over here into uh, Circassia. So that's pretty good. I'm a big fan. The cultural diversity also continues to grow. Uh, consider each color is a different culture group. So we're definitely having a lot of mixing and mashing and uh, Greeks over here, apparently. So I'm, I'm very much here for this. It has been over 500 years since we started this run and it just keeps getting more and more messy as time goes on. We have Korea and uh, Manchuria over here looking pretty good, I guess, with uh, China looking like vanilla, if I'm being honest. So I guess this isn't really too bad. It looks about what you would expect, though. Kazakh being over here is mildly hilarious. Actually, it's very hilarious, in my opinion. <laughs> I'm sure that there's a ton of nations that like are in places they shouldn't be, but a lot of them make sense, like Gujarat, Sindh, Mewar. A lot of them are in their historical regions. And then there's just like Kazakh over there. <laughs> We've got Transoxian over here across from uh, Trebizond, or Trebizond, however it's pronounced, which is pretty funny. Uh, Muscovy very much not in Muscovy, same with Tver. So I, I think that it's just trying to spawn them in like their region. It's definitely wrong because this is like the Pontic Steppe region anyways, but still it's pretty good. Byzantium still exists and the Ottomans are a one province minor, which is wonderful. We do have Moria over here and then Epirus getting 
absolute total domination over Italy, which will allow them to snowball because Italy has a lot of trade in these two regions between the Venice and the Italian node, uh, the Genoa node. It's going to be it's going to be really good for them. We have Sicily that spawned over here on Malta and they are getting over here as well. So if they can get kind of a hegemony in this region, that'll be really good for them. Of course, we have Simeon down here who is a uh, Mexican culture, which is super funny. And honestly, I just love how random the cultures are. You got stuff like this where Tver is Muscovite, which is reasonable. And then you have like the Armenians over here in Sarahan. <laughs> we have the Mali and the Bozos over here in Northern India. The Czechs and the Kazakhs over here right next to the Quebecois that is Korea. So very solid stuff. And somehow, some way, it's all Jane. They're all Jane. Minus some random Hindu and some totemist, a couple of Shinto over there with some Hindu here. We have Hellenism that has spawned over here in Kerman. So hopefully we're going to see a little bit of variety. I do hate to see it all be one. I mean, it's fun, but it's um, it's not very interesting. So hopefully we're going to see some things popping out of that. Oh, and I did almost miss that we've got the Romuva, which is like the Baltics over here in uh, Taiwan. So that is a thing 100 years later and things are definitely picking up we are seeing a huge explosion of diversity of nations and uh, let's take a look at that china is equally as disgusting as it was last time we looked uh though we do have quite a bit of stuff going on down here and uh, over in india equally as disgusting very much a thunderdome i'm sure things are going to uh start to sort out maybe maybe <laughs> i don't know we'll see Definitely a lot of new tags that I think were added for the mod as well. Some tags that I'm very much not familiar with, though there's definitely some that I am familiar with, like Valencia, Catalonia, the Pope, <laughs> Albania. So things are looking pretty cool. We've got uh, people kind of racing uh, westward as they start to colonize. Galicia, Volhynia, Lithuania, Mazovia, uh, Dalmatia, Austria, the two Sicilies apparently up here in northern Italy. So there you go. It's clearly only a matter of time before, you know, we get the rest of the world sorted out and it's only 600. So I don't know how colonization is going to work with the new world. I don't know how that's going to work. And I didn't remove the natives. There is just no natives in this mod. So we'll see how things go with that. Jains still continue to dominate. And we're definitely seeing certain cultural groups pop up. The Muscovites over here, surrounded by like Mexicans <laughs> over here, Romanians over here. The Armenians are ch hanging out over here. Uh, so we're definitely seeing some good stuff. One thing that I definitely wanted to point out is that Byzantium is Slovene and Albanian mixed. So ugh, beautiful. The Pope is Jane, by the way. And he's also whatever this is, Haida. He's, he's one of the Haida cultures. So that's a thing. And so 600 years into the game, we've got Moria out in front with over 300 development. Uh, Biajapur with almost 300. Same with AQ. Looking pretty good. There's a bit of a drop down to the 4th and 5th with about 250 each. Uh, a little over 200 for 6th and 7th spot. And then 8th spot is exactly 200. So it's fairly even across the board. There's a lot of nations that are sort of similar in size. Uh, but only time is going to tell which uh, kind of blobs pop out of those groups. All right, it's been like 50 or 60 years since we've last looked. Things are definitely starting to fill in over here in Africa with the Pope Man and Makuria making their way down in. Uh, we also have things filling in over here in North Africa as well as Iberia and uh, also heading into France. Germany is mostly filled out with obviously like the lowlands in this sort of region here. And we even have the English... I regret to inform you, but uh, all is well with that. We have the Danes and the Swedes and Gotland has um, got land. <laughs> the Balkans look roughly what they do in our timeline. So seems about right. And to be honest with you, it's it's all bad. It's all bad. I, I imagine that there's like a certain point where things are going to slow down. Question mark. I'm uh, kind of hopefully wishing <laughs> because it's very, very messy still. It's like just as messy as it's ever been. And it's like almost the year 700. So things have been going on for quite a while and uh, things are not looking any better. We've got nations like Bulgaria who were over here before migrating up. Uh, Muscovy and Tver are still going semi-strong. And uh, of course, obviously, everybody's religion and all that stuff is spreading. But Jainism is still going strong as well. Though I do love to see the Sikhs doing well over here. Sikh is a very cool religion. And then just, you know, Nahuatl over here in you know, Fergana or whatever. <laughs> About another 50 years later, things are definitely filling in. I actually think that all of it is filled in, minus Sub-Saharan Africa, but 
can't say there's probably that much development down there, at least in 1444, whatever this date is, like 830 or something like that. Shout out Sparta. There's a Sparta on the map. They have Naruto leading their army. Big boy Switzerland, my spirit animal over here, watching it all unfold, being very peaceful, I'm sure. Bulgaria still has horrible borders. They've got land over here as well in between the Slovaks and then uh, the Chernigovs and the Mazovians. Uh, we do have quite a few noticeable like normal tags that we would see. We've got Poland, Thuringia, though they're not really in Thuringia, Burgundy, France, Brittany, uh, Galicia and Asturias up here, but Castile in the south. So things are looking kind of normal, actually. Uh, it's just kind of funny to see. And then out here, it's just still a mess. It's like worse than it was before. They've gotten down here, but uh, not really a whole lot past that. Now, here we are in the year 1000. It's actually 1003. And uh, not a whole lot has changed, admittedly. Uh, South Africa or the Southern Sahel, I guess, has filled in. Central Africa, the Congo, and down over here into Kilwa has filled in. We don't have anything over here, which isn't surprising. It's going to be limited by technology. We haven't gotten anything over here either, which I assume is still limited by technology because the way that it works is, is it's just two colonists base everybody in the world has two colonists um but nobody's using them and i don't really know why and i'll be honest this mod is running horribly bad it's like a year a minute and i'm on like a ryzen 9 7950x so i don't think this mod runs well and uh, i'm gonna call it here but we're gonna take a look and kind of see uh, what sort of interesting stuff we got going on at the end we have a uh, Cypriot Iberia that ended up coming in with Valencia controlling the strait. Pretty cool to see. Aragon ended up showing up as well, which is pretty cool. France has a bunch of little breakaways. Gascony, Dauphine, Burgundy still going strong. Trier is here. Alençon popped out with uh, Normandy over here. Brittany was eaten, though uh, up here, this is, this is much better. I like this a lot more. Norwegian Britain, Northumberland, Ireland over here, uh, though it is very much split up between other people and you know that is what it is but england is the isles or at least the southern hebrides or inner hebrides and then dumfries over here so very good to see we do have a lot of tags that do make sense finland gotland of course makes a lot of sense sweden norway denmark down in here um and most of these nations over here just make sense so i'm not really sure i think that the way that they're spawned is based on their region but then when you look at the religion map mode and the cultural map mode it doesn't make sense at all like i don't know what caused this but jainism is like <laughs> the whole religion of the whole world and there's like very little variation there's some hindus over here in the steppes some animists some zoroastrian over here in india with sikh kind of sprinkled throughout but aside from that it's jainism all the way down oh of course and the the animists that exist over here in germany and uh also france because France is Nahuatl, apparently. So there you go. The Haida, Nahuatl, France. All right. The cultures are surprisingly like pretty borders for the most part. There's obviously some, some exceptions over here, but like we've got the Croatians and the Serbians, the Bulgarians over here, the Haida over here, the Transylvanians and the Hungarians over here, but also the entirety of Northern Europe with the Lao over here and the Mon over here. This is like Burmese cultures. So I like it. I like the way that this ended up. I'd love to see the mod organized a little bit better to the point where it actually functions. Like technology is completely borked. Like people just cannot take technology, which I think is probably intended, but like none of it is localized. All of this is unlocalized. And a lot of these requirements are just like very arbitrary. Like one of them said, one of them was like either be tech whatever or tech whatever. And the one tech was just later than the other one. So kind of strange, I think that the mod has a lot of potential, but it definitely needs a little bit of work. But taking a look at the timeline, it is it's pretty cool. You can definitely see the slow start. And I was like, oh, okay. And it was running really fast in the beginning. And you can see kind of tags popping out and then consolidating. And I was like, okay, this is cool. I can get behind this. And then after a certain while, it just really, really started bogging down. And I think that's just kind of the way that it goes, obviously. Maybe we could make it so, uh, you know, colonists don't apply for everybody after a certain period of time something like that might help the game run a little bit faster but um yeah enjoy the rest of this and uh, i will talk to you guys on the other side
favorites probably got to be Albania over here with Sparta and Spartan Italy. Lots of really good stuff over here. I didn't realize this, but in the timeline, I saw Israel was like actually all of this at one point and then they collapsed and now they're just Jerusalem, but still pretty cool. Delhi has very strange borders and is exclusively outside of Delhi. At least most of them is outside of Delhi. Though the Norse culture over here, I think is definitely my favorite. It was like one of the founding cultures of the world and it's still here just chilling. We finished the game with Delhi, the only nation with over a thousand development in the world with almost 1200 followed way below them with under 500 development, Sindh, Bahari, Madurai, Karaman, uh, Berar, Wu, and then Gascony with over 300 development in the top eight. If you enjoyed the video, please do make sure you leave a like on the video. I appreciate it a ton. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about it and what you'd like to see next. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you subscribe to the channel and ding the bell so you get notified when these videos go up live. And if you made it all the way to the end of this video, I want to let you know from the bottom of my heart that I appreciate you and I hope that you have an absolutely wonderful day. Special thanks to Kaiser Dar of Acadia, Geo, Gamus23, Ian Powell, Cannon Fodder, Josh Kipchinski, Agent Rhino, Blonde Damon, Isaiah, Rover, Bubba J, Saronska, Ricardo, Cobalt, Rex Rex, Nathan Albright, and many more.